A R G A I N bag bargain bag doodle you da da bargain bag doodle you da da B A R G A I N bag bargain bag doodle you da da. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for Bargain Bag once again, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. Yes, two bags times seven CDs each equals oodles of fun. Anyway, uh, between the opening the two bags right here on camera, uh, I talk about a CD that I have found or that you might be likely to find in the bargain section of any music retailer that you might care to shop at, be it a record store, a thrift store, wherever you go to buy music. Uh, but before the bags, I break down what I listened to and uncovered in the previous month's bargain bags. But before I get to any of that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about what the future of this final year of bargain bag holds. You see, I've got enough of my mystery CD grab bags in my stash in the closet there uh, to open two bags per month through the month of December. Uh, but then I realized a couple of months ago, I don't want to open any bags in my December video because that's just going to leave a weird little awkward um, breakdown portion to do in January, kind of like a, a thread hanging off the end of your shirt sleeve. You know, I don't want to leave anything dangling like that beyond the calendar year of 2021. So, uh, and I was just kind of thinking aloud at the end of last month's bargain bag, I was thinking, well, what could I do with those two spare bags, so to speak, the two December bags. And I thought about, my first thought was what I kind of said aloud there in my video was I, I could open one additional bag per month in my April and August bargain bags. But then I decided, I, I came up with a better idea, even though at least one of my viewers is apparently going to be disappointed that I'm not opening three bags in this video. Sorry, Jeff. This is the idea I came up with. I, I'm just going to open two bags per month all the way through October. In my November video, I will open the last four bags. So I will do a double size bargain bag in November. That way I won't have any bags to open in my December video, but it will flesh out the, the breakdown portion. It'll make the breakdown portion longer. Plus I can also, uh, you know, fill up the extra time in that video, make it a nice full length video by doing my list of my favorite bargain bag finds. Uh, of the year in, in December. It's something I've done each December of the last two years that I've done Bargain Bag. Make it a nice grand farewell celebration for my Bargain Bag feature, one of my favorite features to do, to do on my channel. So yes, that's my plan and uh, I thought it made sense. Hopefully the disappointment that you might be feeling that I'm not opening three bags today uh, will be made up for by the fact that you think that this is a good idea as well as I do. And the beauty of, of all this is that my birthday happens to fall within the month of November, so uh, I will be opening the extra two bargain bags as kind of a birthday present to myself. Yay me! Anyway, uh, so so yeah, that, that's what I've decided to do. So, uh, and I I do hope you enjoy bargain bag as much as I've been enjoying it. Uh, all these uh, this is the third year that I've done bargain bag, and this, as I said, will be the final year since that's all the bags that I was able to grab from Skips before, before it closed back in August of 2019. So, yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts, and uh, yeah, I, I fully intend to do so as well. So, But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on with this month's Bargain Bag video, starting with the breakdown, of course, of the contents of last month's pair of mystery CD grab bags, in rough order from Cast Offs to Keepers. Let's go ahead and get started. First one is a classical CD. Uh, this is solo classical piano uh, performances of compositions by Rachmaninoff, and if I had to pick a favorite a, or a least favorite subgenre of classical music, it would probably be solo piano stuff. You know, just the piano, nothing else. And that's kind of, well, it's kind of boring to me. Sorry, you know, to put it bluntly. Well performed by uh, this guy here, but um, yeah, just not compelling enough for me to keep. Uh, good stuff for you know putting on in the background and relaxing to. Uh, uh, whatever, you know. And anyway, the next one was in a previous bargain bag. This is a five-track EP by a group called Symposium, a rock band, and I couldn't remember it from the last time I had it in a bargain bag, and for a pretty good reason. It's a cast-off again. It is post-grunge rock. Nothing really stands out about it, and yeah, just kind of another meh CD, as, as most cast-offs are, pretty much. So, yeah. Next up here we have... Uh, one of the things that's just just not my thing is basically what it is. It is a group called Pariah, I believe, and the album is called Misanthropos, unless I've got the artist and title backwards. 
which I may every once in a while do. Uh, but yeah, this is death metal, or actually, I don't, I don't know if it's actually death metal or speed metal or thrash metal or what. I, I'm not familiar with the subgenres of metal. I finally came around to realizing t the two ingredients that I do not like about music, or two of the ingredients. Uh, when the beats per minute are really fast, which is the case with speed metal or thrash metal, and also when the singer or the vocalist crosses the line from singing to screaming and yelling. That's what, if you like this stuff, seek out this album but yeah this is just uh, just not my thing the only exception to i mean every once in a while there's an exception to the beats per minute rule uh but yeah the only artist that i've really cared for who screams or yells and that's only part of the time is dave Grohl of the foo fighters but yeah other than that i mean this is just really the, the really hardcore howling growling kind of yelling it's just yeah just not my thing at all so any of you uh extreme metal heads out there this may be an album for you, but it ain't one for me. So uh, anyway, uh, next one up is Wild Turkey. These guys have an element, elements in some songs, just, uh, you know, pop rock, straightforward kind of pop rock, basic stuff like that. And in some songs, they have elements of Celtic rock. So, and I don't know if they're, well, th this is from uh, England. It was made in England, so it's very possibly a, a uh, Irish band. So... But yeah, just not my thing. Just none of the songs were really memorable. There were a couple that were kind of catchy, but uh, uh, considering my space uh, limitations are starting to uh, become an issue, uh, sort of catchy is not catchy enough for me to want to keep it, is basically what it is. Then we have um, a country CD. This is Larry Stewart, and this is the, in doing research here, this is the solo debut album from the frontman of the country band Restless Heart. Uh, it's okay stuff in terms of country. I mean, I like a little bit some country, but not a whole lot. And this was not quite um, distinct enough for me to want to keep. Then we have uh, Jeff Arundel. And this guy, this his album is Walking in the Dark. This is kind of bland in, in my opinion. Just my opinion. And oh, color coordination. Well, almost. That's purple. This is blue. Anyway. <laughs> off track. But yeah, one of the vibes I got from this is kind of Barry Manilow in his more blah or meh uh, albums. Not you, you may not find much of anything to like about about that unless you're a big Barry Manilow fan. So Monkey Walk with I believe what is their sophomore album More. And this is this is kind of bluesy. Uh, in you know bluesy alt rock is basically what it is. So this was it was kind of cool. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep it enough to uh, listen to it again before I cast it off. Something's telling me to listen to this thing once more before I decide to uh, keep it or not, but uh, not a bad album, gotta say. Then we have Club Kama Aina, which I th I'm not sure who's the artist and who's the title, but uh, Folktronica is kind of what I call this, you know, a folk kind of music with a fair bit of electronica elements in it, more, you know, more synthesizer type stuff. It was okay. And then this next one is uh, how home that's h-o-w-e-h-o-m-e -E. that's you kind of see the uh, price tag is covering up the uh, e but yeah but yeah this is basically piano based jazzy singer songwriter stuff and but one thing i did not find very appealing about it was the singer has a very low and very quiet vocal style just not quite my thing it was almost like he was trying to put on an affectation you know, probably not but that's just the vibe that i got off of it and yeah his voice just was not quite to my liking so then this next one was probably the most disappointing CD in this lot. I was kind of hoping I was going to like it just because she seemed like the kind of artist I would like. Marla Glenn, and this is her album Love and Respect. R&B pop, which I don't mind, uh, but I'm not crazy about her voice. Her voice is very deep, very raspy. It's a low, gravelly, raspy voice, and it just, it just took me by surprise. I might listen to this thing one more time because sometimes if I know what I'm going to get out of the voice, the songs might become more appealing. That's happened to me before, so I think I will probably listen to this one one more time just to see. Yeah, Very disappointed about that one. This next one, though, is an artist that I had been meaning to check out um, in recent months. Poi Dog Pondering is the name of the artist. Now, I knew about them way back in the 90s, uh, but I would never checked them out. And yeah, this is their fifth album, Natural Thing and not bad at all. They, they, the band comes from Hawaii, and I don't, they're not all Pacific Islanders, I don't think, and their music isn't Hawaiian, but it's kind of indie pop folk 
with a little bit of um, uh, ethnic or world music elements in it, just a little bit of that stuff in it, which kind of reminds me in the sense of another group that I've came across recently, uh, Rusted Root. So, but these guys are a little bit more folky, whereas Rusted Root is a little bit more rockish, just a little bit more rockish. Uh, the one annoying thing about this CD though is you will notice no track listing and there are no pockets here, so there are no liner notes either. So it's just one of my little gripes, one of my little pet peeves about album art. Unique album art is great. It's, you know, I, I love the artistic aspect, but give me a freaking tra track listing, people. So, uh, and also the CD is a little bit scratched up. So, uh, but I like this album enough that I went ahead and ordered, and I actually already received. This was just, uh, I just, just got them yesterday. Poor Dog, Poor Dog Pondering's first four albums. They were in a, a lot on eBay. For a good price so i might uh use this as a placeholder keep it until i get a copy in better condition we'll see and then we have one of well i have two definite keepers in this lot uh, this is one that i am a possible keeper i'll probably listen to it again like a couple of the others this is an al a band called romantica and this is their album america and kind of in keeping with the title this is americana type music you know rock with some uh, country elements and i at first i expected this was going to be a latin album first of all because of the band name romantica and also a couple of the uh song titles had were either in spanish or had elements of spanish or mexican uh names in there but uh, it's yeah it's pretty good stuff honestly i i kind of like it and yeah several good good catchy songs on here yeah good stuff then we have two keepers. Uh, the first one is, I didn't think I was going to keep this one, but hey, I like it. Uh, the Osbournes uh, soundtrack, the Osborne Family album. Uh, good stuff. It starts off with uh, the song Crazy Train by who else but Pat Boone. Yes, Pat Boone does a cover of Ozzy's Crazy Train on here. It's, it's something to behold, let's put it that way. And uh, of course, a few songs by Ozzy himself. Kelly Osbourne's version of Papa Don't Preach, the Madonna hit. Uh, we have a couple of other interesting picks. Uh, you Really Got Me by The Kinks, one of The Kinks' best songs. Uh, Drive by The Cars, which is a, obviously a gorgeous song from the 80s. And uh, Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton, another great one. So it's it's a good choice, a good selection of songs. But yeah, there are like three or four Aussie songs that he does on here. As well as Imagine by John Lennon, another classic from uh, from the 60s, actually. So, you know, an interesting set of songs. I'm thinking of keeping it just for the fact that it's got such an interesting track list. So yeah, and it has sound bites of the Oz, you know from the Osborns TV show uh, interspersed throughout the song, so that, that's kind of entertaining too. And then we have the last of the CDs, uh, the other keeper at least for now, is a guy named Scott Matthews. I had never heard of this guy before, uh, and he is not related to Dave Matthews, but he puts on a heck of a Dave Matthews impersonation. Uh, you know, not deliberate probably, but not just in his voice but also kind of in the song styling. He's kind of got that folk rock with a little bit of world music kind of a thing to it, just like the Dave Matthews band. And his voice is kind of like Dave Matthews, but this guy is actually British, whereas Dave Matthews is American. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And I mean, this, the track list is just loaded, 17 songs on here. So and I think a couple of them are interludes, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to keep this one and listen to it a few more times. So yeah, it left a good first impression. Let's put it that way. And now let's go ahead and get started with opening the first of this month's two mystery CD grab bags. Scissors in hand. And I'll give you the customary peekaboo. Peekaboo, you see CDs. I don't yet. So let's go ahead and get started and see what's in here. Bonnie Raitt. The best of Bonnie Raitt. Nice. Uh, I, I may actually keep this one. You know, the, the cover is awfully thrashed. The, the front of the CD case is kind of thrashed. So I'll be interested to see uh, what condition the CD itself is in. So, uh, But yeah, that's probably going to be a keeper. Then we have... Wumpscut is the name of the band. I kid you not. It's right there on the uh, spine there. Uh, Born Again is the name of the album. I have no idea. Oh, it's a German CD. Hmm. Something tells me it's going to be metal. So if it's uh, if it's German metal, I think I have a friend who may want the CD. And if it's German metal, I probably won't like it. But I'm not afraid to listen to anything. So then we have Nine Electric, The Damaged Ones. This also kind of looks like a metal type of uh, album here. So I wish I could comment, but I have nothing to say because I've never seen it before, never heard of the group before. 
Ooh, a karaoke CD. Whoopee. This one's probably going straight into the uh, recycle bin. And, oh, Alicia Keys, Aaliyah, Usher, Craig David. Okay, I recognize a few of the artists on here. You would think that a karaoke CD has just top hits on it, but a couple things I didn't recognize on there. And we have Etta James, a Christmas album. This is going to be, I might actually, well, depending on how many Christmas CDs I have, I might do uh, a 12 CDs of Christmas and a 12 tapes of Christmas. So you guys might get a load of Christmas videos from me this year. But yes, Etta James. I mean, what can you say about Etta James? She is fantastic. I love her. Then we have, oh, Michael Crawford. Oh, songs from the stage and screen with the London Symphony Orchestra. I have, you have heard me tout the Lon London Symphony Orchestra a few times recently. So, yeah. This could be interesting. I'm not a huge fan of show tunes, so the content is not particularly of interest to me, but the, if they're well performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, we'll see what happens. Okay, and the last CD from this bag. A little too high over the camera lens. Motherlode, Heartline. Okay, there's a track called Heartline, so the artist must be Motherlode. I have never heard of them before. We'll see what they are. It appears to be a, a an all-female band, so yeah, I'll be curious to listen to this. So there you have it, the first bag. Okay, now let's go ahead and get to the uh, bargain bag spotlight CD for the month of April 2021. Oh, it's April already. Wow. Anyway, I'm I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to say about this CD, so this review might be a little bit short. Uh, but don't let that be a slight against the CD, I guess you'd say, or a, a, a detriment to it, uh, because it is an excellent album. I mean, I wouldn't be talking about it here if I didn't think it was a great album. Uh, and also, the artist, uh, I think, does not get talked about enough, especially not in recent years. Uh, she was a, a key artist in the realm of R&B music, uh, started recording, I believe, back in the 60s and through the 90s, and I don't know if she's been recording, uh, in the, if she's recording the albums in the 21st century or not, but... Uh, Still, she's a uh, one of the heroines of R&B music. This is Roberta Flack with her 1991 album, Set the Night to Music. And fantastic album of early 90s R&B pop music. Wonderful stuff. Would we expect any less from Roberta Flack? And I can't remember if I found this one in the $1 section at Epic Seconds or if I actually found it on the freebie shelf at House of Records. But either way, it was definitely well, well worth the money. Worth more than the money, honestly, if you ask me. Uh, the title track was, of course, made famous by Starship, I believe, a few years earlier, and she actually duets with Maxi Priest on this version of it. And a couple of other well-known songs that have, that kind of have a history before this album, uh, You Make Me Feel Brand New, which I can't remember who it was that recorded that song uh, earlier, but I know it wasn't Roberta Flack because I remember the original version and it was sung differently than the one on this one. Uh, also, Unforgettable, the classic Nat King Cole song. Uh, of course, no version is going to come anywhere near the Nat King Cole version, except maybe the one that Natalie Cole did as a duet with her late father. Uh, but still, this one, very, very well done, honestly. Some great um, songwriting credits in here. Some great uh, artists, uh, Bette Midler and Leonard Cohen, are among the uh, songwriting uh, credits on here. And Irving Berlin, he actually composed the, uh, the closing song, Always, one of the American Songbook standards. As well as My Foolish Heart, that was written, not written by uh, Irving Berlin, but that one's also on here. That was a, a great American Songbook standard. Summertime is not the old uh, songbook standard, but it is the Leonard Cohen song, Summertime, or at least he co-wrote that one. But yeah, some great songs. And this is actually a surprisingly long album. Uh, clocks in at over 50 minutes because only one song on the album is less than four minutes long. And two of the songs are five and a half minutes long. So yes, this is a long album, but it does not feel like it. It is over before you know it, trust me. So yeah, nearly all the songs are like four and a half minutes long. So it's just wonderful, wonderful song, four and a half minutes long or more. So yeah, great album. I highly recommend it if you're if you're a fond of early 90s, late 80s R&B pop music and and or, or if you've never tried out Roberta Flack, you could do a lot worse. I, actually, I don't think you could even do badly trying out Roberta Flack. So yeah, a highly recommended album. Go try it out. And now let's go ahead and rip into the final bargain bag of the month won't actually rip into it. I'll just open it with scissors because that's a little safer. I, I tried ripping into it earlier and like almost half the bag came with it, which, you know, I, I want to hold the suspense as I go through the CDs. So that kind of 
almost gave away part of the uh, surprise, so yes. It's strictly scissors. So let's go ahead and get started here. And that way, so. We have Michael Penn, free for all. I've heard of this guy. I have never tried him out, so if I finally have a good excuse to do so. so yeah. We have Boilermaker with their album Watercourse. I have never heard of these guys, so I don't know what to say about them. Then we have the Taylor Eigsty Trio with Ren Resonance. So I think this might be a local artist. Oh no, Menlo Park, California. That's where the CD was made anyway. So hmm. I, I believe it's jazz. So, hmm. We have H Blocks or H Block or H Blocks with Fly Eyes. They look like they kind of look like a hip hop or I'm thinking maybe Sugar Ray or oh what's that that one group Sublime is that them so that's kind of the vibe I get from them from the uh, back cover anyway so. gonna have a lot of interesting stuff to listen to in this bargain bag I, I can tell the Mojo Gurus with their album Gone I am looking forward to trying out the Mojo Gurus because why shouldn't I we have this. I can't read it. Uh, Abakadubi. Peaceful Revolution. Abakadubi. 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 A very musical name. Uh, five songs on here. A lot of CDs in here that I have absolutely no idea what to say about them because I've never heard them. And then we have... Ooh, that one went right over the camera lens. Hopefully that was a good shot. We have... Dagobert Bohm. That's his name. That's what it says. With the album Morning Flight. Something tells me this is classical. Uh, contemporary classical, probably. Yeah. All titles composed and arranged by Dagobert Bohm. No, it's actually got sax and keyboards and stuff, so it is probably jazz or new age. It's some kind of instrumental. So, An interesting selection, yet again, from the bargain bags. And just like that, Bargain Bag is over once again. Gosh, only eight months of Bargain Bag left. I can't stand it. Somebody send me some mystery CD grab bags, will you? Anyway, uh, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't ask for something like that. I might, uh, you know, that they say, be careful what you wish for, you know? But anyway, uh, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of April 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.